So for this tying demonstration, I want to introduce you to my friend Jay Peck. Jay is a fishing guide. Uh, he's been working at a Carl Coleman's shop since 1990. I would have to say early 90s. Yep, so Jay and I go way back. Well, Jay, Jay's been around longer than me, but uh, <laughs> we got some old, old stories we, and some pretty crazy stories. From yeah, the, the we, we know each other long enough. We got some good crap on each other. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Jay is a commercial fly tire, and, and he guides up on the Salmon River. He keeps a pretty full book spring and fall. Guide a, you know, a and, bunch uh, of places. I'm kind of like a gypsy. Yeah, <laughs> and he's a perfect guy to demonstrate the pattern we're going to do today, the apple maggot. <laughs> discover this pattern? Well, a, a mutual friend of ours saw it in a steelhead um, fly tying book. Mark Stoddard. Because Mark is a rather storied guy on the, on yeah, the and, tributaries around here. Yeah, some of the local tribs, he's still a well-known name. Yeah, Mark found it in a book and he called him and says, oh, you got to tie this fly, you got to fish it. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he said, it's called the apple maggot. Mm. Oh, apple maggots, that's a pest that I spend half my summer fighting in the orchard. It's a little bug that gets into the apples and a worm and destroys the, the fruit. Good part of your career is spent on the farm. Fighting that, yeah, yep. yeah. She's a little insight to my old life. Now that's actual silk you got for food. Yeah, this is actually some silk I found laying around in the shop. Fancy. Yeah, so we're, we're going full class here. We're not using the the um, fake stuff. We're going to use the real stuff today. Okay. So. I think it's important to let the viewers know that you're someone who doesn't just tie for your own use and you don't just tie for your clients use, but you tie just dozens and dozens of flies for sale at fly shops. Yeah, well. I do. Unfortunately, I tie ridiculous amounts of flies. I'm going to it's not a traditional tag here because what I've learned to do is just wrap up onto the floss body it actually adds for a little bit of durability oh interesting yeah um normally a traditional tag is wrapped directly onto the hook here i go up onto the floss um and it just helps hold the, f the fly together hmm. without you know the fishing stuff like that sometimes that floss will come a little bit loose well, these steelhead flies strength is a major concern because boy I, their teeth are so strong and they the, fight so crazy that they can rip a fly yeah they can rip a fly up plus the environment you're fishing in they can get whaled on yep here's some pheasant rump this is just good old ring neck pheasant and we're gonna put that in and uh stuff is fragile it's a little tricky to work with but i'm gonna tie this in butt first Traditionally, this fly was tied with with um, seal, real seal dyed yellow, and this is um, what they call a pseudo seal. Um, now they call it a kind of an owl, but it's actually a yellow. And I don't know whoever dyed this; it must be colorblind. So they club the baby petroleum to get that. Yes, yes, yeah. They beat up the baby petroleum barrels <laughs> for this. Absolutely, and it's actually I like it better. Um, my father-in-law's had a fly shop for going on sixty years, so there's all sorts of little treasures buried in the basement and he back from the 40s and 50s he had some real seal let me tell you something real seal is a pain to work with work with the new imitation stuff it's a lot nicer and it looks a lot better tell you what a tour of the catacombs of this building is something for a fisherman it's a, I've been, a museum down yeah there. i've been digging in this place for 20 years and i still sometimes find a treasure <laughs> get a hold of it here try to find the center of it the best i can Wiggle it out here so the curve side naturally goes back towards the um, the best I can make it behave towards the, the um, bend of the hook. Oops, kind of got off the center there. Let me retry. So that pheasant that. rump, like how much variation in the length of the fibers do you get off the same bird? A lot. Hmm. They can be incredibly long. Like I could be. This is a. This is an Alex Jackson. Five, I could be tying some of those on like a 1-0 and have length stuff. So it just it 
it can vary from bird to bird and through the rump patch. So you can do you got to do a lot of sorting. Hmm. So this may look a little unruly what we're doing here, but we're actually counter wrapping the copper wire through this hackle. That means we're winding it the opposite direction of uh, what the hackle is wound. And what that does is anchor down the feather stem like it'll be harder for a fish's tooth to cut the feather and make it unwind. And what I've also learned is, is um, this is for me tying them. I use it like in the front collar. I'll put a couple of them up because they can get a little bit. Um, I think one is just a little too thin. The fly looks a little anemic. There we go. Got it. And that second one just kind of seems to do a nice job, as you can notice here. It just starts to fill the fly in. You can also notice I'm using my fingers at each turn. I'm just grooming. Mm. Come back around, catch it. What I got here is some orange saddle hackle that works. It's just a little long. We're going to shorten it up. I like it to just kind of go to the bend of the hook or just fall short of the bend of the hook. Are those wings or are they going to be a collar hackle? These are going to be wings. Wings, okay. Yeah, there we go. That looks about right. I'm going to come back, cut it off. And here we're tying in a collar hackle of dyed guinea hen and you have to strip the barbules back until the stem until the stem gets thin enough to actually wrap around the shank and you only give it a couple of wraps you don't need it that full kind of stroking the barbules back as you go giving it a whip finish here i'm using my fingers just because uh, i do have a whip finishing tool but it was out of reach Here I'm grooming the fly using a tool that's basically Velcro glued to a stick. Just comb everything backwards, it uh, straightens out the hackle and frills out the dubbed body. <laughs> 